Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to the Beans and Dice podcast. This week we'll be talking about BGA, aka Board Game Arena, and doing a deep dive. Keep listening. You're listening to the Beans and Dice podcast, a podcast about how we game. Uh, so this week uh, we've been playing a lot of Board Game Arena. Um, I guess we should introduce who's here before I do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Carlos. I'm Rob. I'm Wayne. And I'm Mitchell. This week, the four of us and a lot of people in the Beans and Dice community have been playing a lot of BGA, thanks in large part to Wayne, who's been really pushing that on us. A while back, me and Carlos did a podcast about just online gaming in general. It's his fault. And we talked a little... <laughs> Sorry, he's the dealer. We, we, we talked a little bit about BGA, but today we're going to do a deep dive because Carlos, the old man, is learning more about technology as we, we go through this. And he's like, oh, wow, you can click create and it starts a new game. So... Carlos, I feel like you are the one who, who um, has been impacted most this week by BGA. So maybe you can give us the first topic for discussion. Hold on, I got. I got to put of down my and the uh, game of can't, can't stop right now as we speak on the uh, BGA. So, on my uh, cell phone, yeah, on like cell phone, I'm man. amazed. Like, I, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been so playing on my cell phone. Technology on yeah. phones. Who that's the piece that really stunned me about this whole BGA thing. That really got me kind of going was before I don't. I, I, I work on a computer all day. So to get me onto a computer after work is a, is a struggle. You're just not going to do it. But then to be able to do this on my phone or my tablet or the computer, depending on what's in front of me at that moment, it just makes it so easy. That y- y'all have drugged me in, and I'm, here I am right now, middle of the podcast we're recording. We should be talking about games. You're and playing I'm like, a game. Oh, oh, I'm going to well, What's better going. than talking about games is playing a game, so you're actually doing it. You're doing the thing, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I was in the middle. Oh, of you're the middle. Really, no, you can't uh, respond. Uh, uh, too, 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 too much thing about can't stop. But yeah. before we get into the BGA topic, uh, I do want to go around Robin and talk about some of the games that we have been playing. Uh, you know, BGA or otherwise, it doesn't matter. Highlights for the last two weeks of things that the community should know about, things that they maybe games that they might be interested in, and let them know how we feel about them. Uh, I think I'll start first, and I'll kick us off. Uh, so I had a business trip after the last recording of the podcast. And uh, I talked about this a little bit on the call-in show, but not so much on the podcast. I'm I'm afraid of flying, flat out. I hate flying. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate. It. I either have to drink a lot before I get on the plane, uh, and during the flight, uh, or have conversation with people. And and in this day and age, people don't want to talk to you on a plane. Like this, that's just yeah. not a thing. Don't want to meet new people. Was it ever a thing? Yeah, exactly. I'm that guy. I've never liked talking. I'm that to guy. I'll sit plane. next to you on the plane and like chat you up. Nope. All three hours <laughs> yeah. of the flight. Me nope. pulling my hat slowly over my eyes. No, I'm no, asleep no, no. now. No, let me tell you more. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So I brought with me Palm Island uh, because that weekend, uh, Robert and I actually played in Nick Oban's hot tub. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, oh yeah, we did. We didn't play <laughs> each <laughs> with <laughs> each other, but we played <laughs> with each other. We played with each other, but not, not with each other. <laughs> with each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were t- going after dark Two again. Guys. <laughs> Six feet apart. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. <laughs> uh, so Palm Island is a solo game with uh co- some co-op rules available. Uh we play Robert and I will play solo with the same organization of cards so we can kind of compare scores. Uh, but really, it is just a slow solo game. It's all held in the palm of your hand. You're going to be running through a deck of cards that are shuffled up, so the random order. And each card is either going to give you a resource or is going to require resources to get points. So, for example, the canoe hut is going to give you wood, right? Or the fishing hut is going to give you fish, right? The quarry will give you stone as you tap the cards, and you're going to use those resources: uh, stone, wood. Uh, a fish to build things like housing and temples to and to get actual real points for your for your island that you're building. The cool part is is the way you do it is you, you actually tap in your hand cards to represent res- saving that resource. When you spend those resources to upgrade a card, you're actually either flipping the card or rotating the card. So imagine a card having four quadrants, top bottom, Flip it around on the backside, top, bottom. So four quadrants on each card. And so as you upgrade a card, you're going to flip it. You're going to rotate it. So you're increasing its value, increasing its points. All I know is I played this on the plane. It was a two-hour flight before my layover, nonstop. And first time in my life, in my adult life, flying, I was not worried about the flight. Like I wasn't wow. I wasn't Good, yeah. listening. Like usually I'm listening for every sound. Like, is the engine working the right way? I feel like a little rumble, like, oh, did a wheel fall off? Better than medicine. 
So I, I, I t- to the point where like I literally didn't realize we were already taxiing up and taking off. That's yeah. how much distraction. So I just want to say shout out to Palm Island and and a game that you can be played because you can't have your tabletop down, right? Like I've done some tiny epic games on a plane, but you need the tabletop down, and you can't do that during takeoff and landing. The parts that I hate the most about flying, well, of course, right? So Palm Island let me actually play a game. During takeoff and landing, when you're not allowed to have your laptop, not allowed to have the table tray down, right? So it, just shout out to Palm Island. Thanks from, from me to you. Yeah, and just as a side note, this is a game we played, what, five or six times before you uh, just revealed to me the other day that uh, you're actually supposed to shuffle the cards before you play. We were putting them in numerical order every time we played. We were like, man, it's hard that all these taverns or whatever come out why exactly we the get same all the time. Fish up yeah, front? Why are all the fish up front? You need them at the end of the deck, but uh, it's because you're, sh- you're supposed to shuffle the deck before you how, play. How many cards so, are in the deck? Four, 16. That's not bad. 16. That's easy. Yeah. I got to try that. I've heard that. the um, Fun little game. The family gamers talk about Palm Island all the time yeah. on their podcast. It's like a game that she's like, oh, I'm picking up the kids. I'm sitting in the car line playing Palm Island. So that's cool. I, I have a very important question. A while ago, you said it, you play everything in the palm of your hand. Is that why it's After called Dark? that? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. No, 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 no. I wasn't trying, no, no. Palm Island, the palm serious of your question. hand. Yeah. Like, that's is literally that on it. purpose? It, there's yeah. a palm tree on it, but it's literally because the game is played in the palm of your hand. Yeah, the whole thing. Just you can play pretty much one handed. What you now? Got. Your small hands. You might need two, Mitchell. Yeah, it, two handed. Little hands. Two hands. Two palm handed. <laughs> two palm island. <laughs> He's got double that's the, that's the expansion. Two palm island. <laughs> two palm island. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go clockwise. So you're up next, Mitch. You're on deck. What, okay. What have you um, played? Uh, a couple weeks ago, a buddy of mine taught me a game called Floor Plan. It's a really unique roll and ride. Have you all played that one? I haven't played it yet. It was at uh, game day the month before last. Somebody had, a, maybe Diego had it there. In the same company that did Welcome to. Uh, I'd have to Is look it, it up. I, I don't know. See that. Yeah, I mean, it could be. Yeah, but I, I don't know for sure. So basically, you are like, um, I guess technically an architect. You know, you're you're designing a house, yep. and at the beginning of the game, there are these global objectives that come out that you know the the people who want this house have certain demands, and every round you roll two dice. Um, you're either going to com- um, combine those dice together to build a room. So let's say it's a two and a six. You're going to build a room that's two by six squares. Um, and it can be, you know, kitchen, dining room, whatever. Or um, each number corresponds to a different thing you could put in the house, like a window or a door or furniture. And so, you know, if it's two, then you build two windows. And if it's six, you build like six, you know, decks or something like that. And so it's not... Um, so sim- even though we're all going off the same roles, our houses end up looking wildly different because you have different choices with your roles. Right. Um, sometimes it's really silly. Like you have like a, a one by six living room. Like who wants a living room like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's got windows on every side, you know. But oh, it's kind of cool, cool to compare those at the end of the game. But it, it's a fun, nice take on Roland Riots, and I enjoy it, and I would recommend it. The theme really stands out with this one. It's a strong theme. Yeah, Deep Water Games. That's uh, Carlos just pulled it up here on the BGG. That's the same ones that did uh, Welcome To. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, it has kind of a similar, well, I, I can't say similar look, but it, it, the feel of it, uh, you Railroad know, maybe Inc. it's just that it's it a roll right? It reminds me of Railroad Rink. Yeah, we're Rail, kind of like Railroad Inc. Inc. Yep, yeah, because yep. you're building as you go in the next. I like it. It's cool. Yep. Sweet. Is that graph paper that comes with the game? Yes. It's not really, I mean, I guess <laughs> it's, it's graph paper. It's a grid like cartographers. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of little squares. Is it dry erase or pencil? It's pencil. So it's really themey. Pencil right on the. There's a, there's a pencil on the box, box yeah. cover. We're looking at big old a pencil, pencil on, on the box, box cover. <laughs> oh, let me see if they have Spanish rules in here so I can understand. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't, don't read in English. It can't be super expensive. It's very a very small footprint. Yeah, there's not many components. The dice are just plain blue dice. So I mean, yeah, it can't it's be like twenty bucks. No, I'm just giving like it that. props. Like, okay, yeah. so I see a pad of paper. Is it a, a new sheet every? Every time you play, oh, you keep writing over the same sheet. Yeah, over and of over course and over. you can yeah. always you know laminate it and get some dry erase markers. But yeah, yeah. okay, I, I like it. I, I like it. Yeah, I like the look. I want to try it. Yes, yeah, so they played that. Uh, um, it was it was more than a couple game days ago. But yeah, somebody had it. They played it. I, I watched uh, part of them play through. It looked like fun. All right, I think Wayne's up next. If you got something, yeah. So we um we got uh, canvas to the table. Um, I played some games with my kid, the Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. That's why I thought about it earlier tonight. Um, some some go nuts for donuts. Um, and then just a bunch of games on BGG, which is uh, not BGG, PGA. Excuse me. Um, I got to play my first ever game of El Grande. 
and uh, trying to reteach myself Castles of Burgundy because I know that the Kickstarter is coming up for the, the the fancy edition. So I know I'm going to play that a lot in the next year or two. Um, so uh, yeah, I started trying to remember all the tiles in that game. Uh, but and then just playing Nid of Lear and Can't Stop and a bunch of other games with you guys. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun going down the rabbit hole of BGA. Good stuff. BGA is a trap. Well, <laughs> it is, but it's a trap. A couple weeks ago, I got a chance to play uh, an Uwe Rosenberg. Uh, I want to kind of say classic. It's, it's getting to be classic. I'm looking here on the BGG. It's a 2016 release, Feast for Odin. It's a game I've talked about on the oh, show. You, have, you haven't been able to play that one before, right? Yeah, I'd never played that. I've been talking about it for the last two or three years. That I, That's a, one of the top games on my on my list that I wanted to get played. It was definitely probably one of the top 10 games that I hadn't played that I wanted to play. And uh, I'm looking here, BGA, 8.2 rating, overall number 23 all-time, 18 in the strategy category. And it was good. I mean, it's there's a lot going on. I mean, it was a it was a good probably 40, 45 minute teach um, to get it. Was, it was three new players. Uh, uh, it was a teacher that played it before uh, a lot, um, uh, but the other three of us were all brand new to it. And there is a lot going on in that game. It's a, it's a it's a polyomino game portion of it where you're you're trying to fill in boards. You're covering up stuff to get bonuses. That part of it kind of reminds me a little bit of. Uh, What's the game we played in Louisiana? Uh, the big hot one now that everybody's talking about. Um, Ark Nova. Ark Nova. Yeah, because on Ark Nova, you got the How board. How did you forget? Yeah, we said I that know. word so many times. I know. I've said it probably 30 times in the last two shows. But uh, yeah, in that Ark Nova, as you're covering up parts of the board, you're getting bonuses. And so you're doing that in this game. You're going to lose points for a big portion of the board. Everything is minus ones. So you're trying to cover stuff. That's an Uwe Rosenberg kind of thing. Yeah, Caverna. feed your people thing. Yeah, Caverna. You're, I was going to get to that in just a second. Yeah, you have to feed your people. Uh, that's what Feast for Odin is based on at the end of every round. There's or every, not every round. There's something that you don't have to. Um, but most of the rounds at the end of the round, you've got to feed your your Vikings at the at the feast table. So you're having to set aside some resources to make sure you have enough to do that. Those are also polyominoes that you're not able to place on boards to cover things up. So you're trying to do this little puzzle the whole time of doing that. It's it's known for being a worker placement game with so many options. And there are, I mean, there's columns and columns and columns of places where you can put down workers. And there's literally got to be 60 or 70 different spots that you can put workers on. So it's it's the options are are pretty endless and i thought it would be more ap than it turned out being again three brand new players i think it took us i think somebody said four to five hours to play it uh that would certainly come down uh probably to two to three hours with uh with a couple of plays knowing the rules but it is it could definitely be one of those games that's ap there's so many things you can do so many places you can go that if if you really think it through um you know you've got options to do everything so part of the game is just trying to block those best options from other people who really need it but there's so many. That's places your favorite part of games. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's it, it's it's a good good time. I, I am looking forward to playing it again. That's for sure. So that's, was it as heavy as it look? It's uh, it's not complicated. Um, there are a, a handful of little rules that you have to remember, and there's uh, some iconology uh, that you've got to get used to iconography. Just but once you, it's one of those games that once you pick up what this means and what that means, then. You know, that board that gives you all those different options it's kind of the same things over and over again they're grouped together in different groups that these kinds these things will all do kind of this general thing they're just different ways of doing it you know this area you you know this gets you two of something four or something six of something so you're kind of segmenting the the main board into different areas like okay i need to go to this area by the time it's my turn you know even if everybody goes there i'll probably still be able to get in there i just may not have the optimal of that action or whatever so, uh, but yeah, you have to try it. It's, it's one of those, you just got to experience it, but there is a lot going on. You know, I'll tell you, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a game that you can spend a lot of time thinking it is a, kind of a solitaire game that you for a good portion of it, that you're, you're trying to do what's best for you, fill up your board, put your polyominoes on there. So, but, uh, but definitely what I'm looking forward to again. Yeah. That's a big game too. I mean, like that box oh, yeah. and just just the base game, the table hog. It's, yeah, it's a it, lot. It of, a I've lot seen of that space. set up a couple of times. I'm like, wow, that's a lot. And it's on BGA. Oh, there oh, we go. It? So maybe we gotta maybe we gotta do a tag. That can't be like a segue. segue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a segue. Well, that was once around the table, but uh, yeah, well, we, I guess I'm gonna interrupt that segue. Oh, okay, I'm gonna talk about another game I'm playing. <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead. Roadblock, uh, Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods. Yeah. Ryan Lockett. Mm. Uh, we've been <laughs> continuing our campaign of Sleeping Gods. Uh, I'm still not 
a hundred percent sure where I land on this game, and I talked about it on the call and show before. I can see it in our plays that you're going back and forth on this. Yep, <laughs> it is like th- there'll be some moments where the story really engages me, mm-hmm. and I have a great time, and I'm laughing, and I feel like I'm playing like a role playing game, and then we get into some stuff, and I'm feeling like, wow, this is a a, a place where an alpha gamer would love to live. Yeah, because the game does not separate roles; it does not delineate duties as well as I'd like it to. It really allows everyone to just about at any time provide resources or assistance or help, right? There's no, it's, it feels like it is a solo game with four brains. I was going to say, as we've talked about while we've been playing it, the game is really designed to be a solo game. And that's what we keep going back to the rules. And it's like, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't give me that on your turn. Can you, or on my turn, you can't, somebody who's, turn it is isn't even you know you can't just give me stuff right when we go and look in the rules and it's like oh yeah 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 you can because the idea is that one person really has access to every character every resource everything so that you can play it solo when you play it with more than one person you're just kind of arbitrarily splitting all right the the eight players you take four i take four we play it with four players like we are we all have two players but really it's if there's one person when it's your active turn when you're the quote unquote captain you have access to everything you can steal stuff from other people and be like hey i need that to do this or uh, in, when we it's split too it up, open yeah when we split it <laughs> there's the, no restriction like i can just i can just say hey rob i'm using your skills yeah to help yeah. me pass this there is a little bit on that again we talked about how there is a little bit of ultimately it's my choice if it's my resource if it's my something that i have in front of me i can agree your to let you token. use it or whatever the command tokens yeah i can agree to help you or not help you but I mean, we're all, it's cooperative. We're all working together. So if it's the best thing to do, it's the best thing to do. So did you take turns being the captain? Does it rotate? It does. It rotates. Yeah. Yeah. But all that means is you don't get the final say. You just get to, I don't know. It's, it's, it's the story though. The story is really where it's at. The story's fun. The, in the exploring of the world, meeting of characters, you know, that's where the fun really is. The open world nature. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You can, Make a left when the game is pushing you to the right. You can you can go explore over there. You can let when, the village burn down. You can, yeah, yeah, you can I watch, love that. Watch the village burn. That's what the very and that's the chaos first thing I've been inserting <laughs> is is whatever I feel because Rob, Rob and Nick cannot help themselves. Oh no! Well, we we hit a challenge. We I'm it. captain. Yeah, we we hit a challenge, <laughs> and those two will sidebar, right for six minutes, deciding <laughs> on what the best course of action is. And Dan and I are just looking at each other. <laughs> and when they finish deciding, yep, that's the best course, we nod at each other and do the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> and you, we see where that's got us a few times, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Alpha Gaming, sign me up. If I can just play for all the people with me, we can get through the whole sen- uh, whole campaign in one night. I said, you'll do it in 15 minutes, yeah. <laughs> Mitchell time, trademark. <laughs> Mitchell time, yeah, exactly. Uh, I do want to do an Ethka thing here and say, uh, when it comes to player count recommendation for oh, this yeah. game, uh, one percent, one point three percent of gamers recommend that you play this with more than four players. Ah, uh, yeah, I would. I would never think more than four. Yeah, for sure. It, it only plays four. Okay. Yeah. See, I would never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would never say more than four. I mean, you could all. You could theoretically play it with eight. Could you? I mean, you. It, if this you is take based one off of but... uh, Libertalia video. Uh, oh, is that, where, yeah. Like, if you look at BGG games and BGG people, yeah, they just. They just ridiculous throw stuff, stuff up out there. there. Just stuff that yeah. doesn't make sense. We, we, we played it with eight, four, four couples, so you can argue over who's the leader, yeah, which go. is really just the, the wife. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That works. Smart man. <laughs> Sleeping Gods, I'm still not 100% sure where I land, uh, but the effort and the energy in the story alone. Beautiful game. The story. The yeah. storybook is awesome. And the, the stories that come from it. It sounds like, other, other than the story, though, you could really... It's soloable, right? You can oh, just, yeah. You play it's, all four characters. It's really kind of a... And it's all yeah. fail it's a gra- forward. It'd be a great... Right. It's 100% yeah. fail forward. You will always get the benefit. Yeah. You just might have a negative to go with it if you fail, but you still get the and benefit. no Carlos is going to be failing all the time. I so do. Yeah, a lot of fail. Yeah. There's no dice in this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the fail forward is interesting. Because, I mean, I guess, you know, if, in Gloomhaven, if you fail, you just repeat the scenario. You don't really fail forward. Right. I don't like that one bit. Fail yeah. neutral. That, that, yeah, I don't know. No, I fell it backward, I think, because you got to redo the whole level, and my ADD just can't do the same. Lose thing twice. three hours of your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess fell again. forward. Makes so sense. as an example, yeah. you come across uh, uh, some rats on the ship, right? Um, and either A, uh, you defeat them, and you're going to get meat, or B, you get some meat, but now you have some damage to the ship. Right? You right. always get the reward. 
The question is, do you take the penalty? Penalty. Yeah, that's cool. It's different. Yeah. It's a good one. I uh, I think we're enjoying it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I can see it. It really is an ideal solo game. If, if, if you want to play a big grand game solo, I think that would be a good one. Well, what's to, great is it's play. fast. You got, we're already two-thirds through. Uh, Yeah. So our, there's an event half. deck, and yeah. it's not a very tall event deck. The first time you go through the event deck, it creates a, a, a cycling of things. So cards get put, put back into decks. You kind of reset stuff. Then you go through the event deck a second time, reset stuff. And then you go through the event deck a third time, and you reset stuff. Then you see how you did. Yeah. Right? So it, it really, you may have seen one-fifth of all the, that's there to be seen in your three cycles of that deck. I like that. I like the ability to say, okay, I, I did the game. It was there, it isn't like Gloomhaven, yeah. where Rob can be going for two and a half years oh, yeah. and still not be done. <laughs> yeah. Like we will finish the three the three cycles of the deck. Yeah. How far we got just depending on how well we did. Yeah. Not if Nick Oban has anything to say about it. Exactly. But they they got some expansions though. We'll right? drag this out. Yeah, we've got the expansions. Tides uh, of Rain, and then they've we, announced one for next it was year. Got the Our ship kind of went into the expansion book, and we're like, "Well, wait a minute, we still got other stuff to do." So we put that bad boy yeah. in reverse. Like, we probably shouldn't be over here yet. So we uh, we turned the ship around and went back. <laughs> Such a turn the ship around. <laughs> Mighty Python moment there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mitch, you're up. That was us. You got anything else? Uh, I played Dread Pirate the other day, and man, that I wanted is to hear about that. that What's that? I wanted to hear about that. I was going to ask you questions about that. Oh, one. man. It, it's gameplay you all the way. You roll 2d6s. You move that many times. If you land next to somebody, you roll 2d6s <laughs> to attack them. They roll 2d6s to defend. Um, you get cards that say start here, end here. Um, I mean, there's a couple things, you know, like if you win, if whenever you defeat the person with the flag, you take their flag, you're the Dread Pirate, you add plus one to your 2d6s roll. Um, there's a couple cards that give you special abilities. You're just trying to get the most money or gold um, to trigger the end of the game. It was like I was playing Monopoly. I have a copy <laughs> of this game. Oh, do you? Never been played. You want it, sir? No. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get this to the table? Like, where, whose idea was this? Jeremy owns it, and we're currently right now. We only play games whenever it's him and me that the other one owns that we haven't played. Oh, you're doing that list. thing. Yeah, huh. it's I, it's nice, but we're get so th- we're getting to the games that there's a reason that we haven't played them, uh, and Dread Pirate is one of them. So not recommended. And the crazy thing is, it, it looks nice. Said, this is like the second edition where like, um, like they it's the improved version. There yeah, were, the there were looks enough nice, sales, functional <laughs> enough sales of the first edition to make a second edition. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, there's a um, signature edition and the bookshelf edition. Yeah, and, and the, but the thing is, like, the map looks nice, but, like, it's a grid. But then you have, like, it talks about how, like, you can't go on land. But then you have, like, land that's part of the way in this square. Like, it's 50-50. We're like, can we go in there? Who knows? And then you have cars that are like, put your ship here. And, like, there are words that cover several grids. And we're like, which square are we supposed to be putting it in? It's just, like, not very clear. It seemed not very play-tested, apparently, because there was a lot that we didn't have the answer to and we just had to make a bunch of house rules essentially i think honestly i have a copy of this game because somebody had it in their house and got it as a gift and then they're like oh wayne plays games and we're never gonna play this so let's just leave it at his house if one of our friends came over here here's a game (laughs) (laughs) nice way to get a game you know what's sad is i didn't realize you've done that i had owned this game (laughs) oh it's it's really did you get rid of it <laughs> i let the kids use it as toys like oh. all of it the I metal mean, it looks coins. nice i had the yeah. bookshelf edition with the metal coins and the the metal ships and the cloth mat but the rules read like such garbage i literally just let the boys tear it apart and use it as like a <laughs> nice. a, a pirate ship map yeah. you never even played it no not after reading the rules i didn't good for you Sounds like, sounds like <laughs> I, I and then I guess I forgot it. <laughs> that, I completely wrapped it out of my mind. That bad, huh? <laughs> Maybe I need to bring over my copy. No, okay. no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I'll leave it here. <laughs> we got Merchants and Marauders. We got oh, Tiny Empires. We're yeah, good. Yeah, we got others. Just well, that's note. my recap of that game. And listeners, if you don't hear me for the next 60 seconds, I'm running to hit the head. There Wayne, you your turn. <laughs> Carlos, as a side note, Carlos, it's your turn and can't stop. So uh, man, go ahead and do that while Wayne's talking. Oh, that BGA. <laughs> BGA. That BGA. We're getting, we're getting to that in a minute. We're but. getting it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I. You got, got, a, got another one, Wayne? Uh, I, you know, uh, Eminent Domain. 
All right, highlight it. Talk about it. Just started playing it. And so this was the original, the first big Kickstarter, right? This was the one that made Kickstarter a thing, was, uh, I believe. Kick, Eminent Domain was like one of the first big board games really? on it. Mm. It's just it's pretty straightforward. It's really just, you know, you have a, a tableau of cards and you're, you're it's, a, it's a deck builder almost. You're okay, building, deck you're, building. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, yeah, I think, I think that's the best, best way to say it is you're building a deck of cards and you're using those cards to colonize planets. So it's it's actually sort of tiny epic galaxies like you know like where you're you're playing you're you're using to you land on a planet and you can either conquer the planet or colonize it or whatever and you're playing cards and it's got that follow mechanism like I'm I'm wondering now that literally just popped in my head thinking about this talking about it is like there's some similarities other than the fact that tiny epic galaxies has you know the figures and the ships and stuff like that but in eminent domain you're playing cards to either colonize or attack a planet. And if I play a colonize action, you can follow it and use. Oh my know, gosh! So there's, I, it there's, just, it's all sounding like tiny it, epic galaxies. It, it's, yeah, it is bit. actually yeah. just literally hit my head that wow, that's a lot similar to tiny epic galaxies. <laughs> Rip off, um, Mitchell, who's back. Uh, <laughs> we could edit that out. I, I've been Bladder playing. Empty. Playing. Quick. Uh, have you ever played Eminent Domain? No, I've not. Okay, that's the game I'm playing now, and um, I've heard about it. I haven't ever played it. I'm almost positive it's only one of the first big Kickstarters, and it's it actually a lot of the gameplay is very similar to Tiny Epic Galaxies, which is obviously a later game. Um, but it is it's fun. It's a little card game. I can see I can't see it being a super expensive game, um, but it's all right. It's you know I think it's a little older now, so it's showing its age. If that's your thing though. Like you come like in the old, games, the old right? games, the old <laughs> gamer. <laughs> Played El Grande old this week too. The you know, old, old soul, yeah. neck beard over here. Yeah, that's not body. me. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't grow a beard. Are you kidding me? I've been shaved in like a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a baby's behind, exactly. bro. <laughs> I'll wrap it up. I'm going to touch you on Rolling Realms. That's a game we played for the first time. What was it about uh, two weeks ago, maybe? No, it was this last, uh, last Sleeping week? Gods. It was last week. Okay. It was last right week. after Sleeping Gods. That's right. Yeah. So we uh, we got, got that to the table. That uh, was fun. That was more fun than I think pretty much any of us thought it was going to be. Um, this was a game from uh, uh, Stonemeyer Games, Jamie Stegmeyer put out. Uh, it was during the pandemic. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, he came up with a little roll and write um, that could be uh, print and play. He wanted to put something out there for the community, for people who were stuck at home and wanted a, a light little fun game to play, based it on uh, some of his main titles, uh, made little, if you call them little scenarios, little sheets that were uh, specific to certain games. They kind of gave you a little bit of a feel of what you did in the game, but just in a quick roll and write. And he made them these, these quote unquote realms. And, um, Again, a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be kind of a throwaway title that we'd play it uh, just to uh, just to say that we had played it. And then I think by the time we played it the first time, everybody was like, "Oh, let's let's try that again. That's uh, that's what we need to reset up and play again sometime." There's a little bit of complexity in the different realms. The different uh, some of the some of them are certainly easier than others uh, to get onto. Um, it's there's a lot of variety in the game in the way that they come out because there's is it eleven cards and you play through nine of the eleven you play a group of three then you uh, score it you play a group of another three you score it and you play a group of another three you pick them completely randomly and the way that they interact with each other is really interesting some of them help you get resources some of them need you to spend resources to get points and so with that randomness if if a game comes out and most of most of the the three that come out <clears throat> just happen to be focused on getting resources, it presents unique challenges as far as trying to get and then spend those resources to get points. But uh, uh, it's one Carlos I know really wanted to get to the table so that uh, we could could um, could kind of check it off our list and move on to some other games. But uh, after we played it, like I say, I think we all were like, whoa, let's uh, let's set up a, a appointment. It was late in the night, I think. But we were like, let's, let's set up a time we can play that again. So, yeah, good game. Really good game. I was actually pleasantly surprised with how good that title was. It, and it really wasn't, Rob talked about rules complexity, not in the rules itself. The rules itself are very simple. Yeah. Now, very, uh, I said this earlier today in another game we played, the rules were very verbose. There's a lot of text in the rules, so it really uh, kind of yeah. put me off a little bit at first. You know, English is not my first language and all. Uh, but once we played it, the rules were so simple. It was the complexities in each of the realms and how they interacted with each other, right, yep. where the depth of the game is. Yep. So with 11 cards, you're only playing 9 out of the 11, so you're going to have 3 at a time. Think about all the varied combinations you're going to get each time you play, the three different ones that show up in those three different rounds. 
And we played with your daughter. I think she did great. Yeah, I think we played five of us or four or five of us. Either yeah. she won or came in second. I can't remember. Oh, she usually does, but yeah. Yeah. But it, <laughs> and she's 15 years old, so it yeah. kind of gives you an idea of the age range. 16 now, but yeah. Uh, oh, 16 now? Yeah, 16. God, we are getting old, yeah, brother. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Rolling Realms. I'm with Robert. Yeah, it's a good one. The yeah. way, and, and somebody asked in the call in show, does it take away or, or is there something missing from it be, if you don't play Stonemeyer games? If you games? don't know the games, yeah. I'm going to say if you like rolling rights, you don't need to know how the theme is connected in the games. The challenges on each card alone is enough brain juicy, you know, right stuff to really enjoy it. Yeah, I definitely think, of course, if you know the games, it will add another layer for you. If you know, oh, that's from Wingspan and that's that's kind of a little concept of how Wingspan works, shrunk down to a little teeny tiny rolling right. And that's how Viticulture works, shrunk down into just you know, a couple just just game concepts. Um, you know, it, it definitely will add something, but uh, yeah, really, really interesting. Yeah, and it's sort of infinitely expandable as he puts out more games. He's already there's already a couple of expansion packs, and people make you know print and print play versions of their favorite games that aren't Stonemaier games. Yeah. So that's he's cool. already working with other publishers like Terra Mystica and mm -hmm. and other games to get those realms added to his world. Pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, on that note, uh, we could probably segue to our main topic. Are we are we ready to hit up the? Uh, the oh no, BGA? I still got games to oh, talk about. Oh, I got, right, I, I got I a whole gonna, list of my. Go I'm going to lump yeah. them up. Okay, good. The, the, uh, dice games, like man, I've been having fun playing dice games. So I uh, played a lot of Liars Dice recently. Uh, I had a Blood Bowl tournament recently, and we played Liars Dice till the like it was like two o'clock in the morning before I went to bed. And there's a little rule in the back of uh, Richard Borg's rule set for Liars Dice, uh, his version of Liars Dice with the board is, uh, hey, consider playing for quarters. We played for dollars. <laughs> Holy crap, that ramped up that game. <laughs> Take it from quarters to dollars. You, yeah. you got to throw a dollar in to play that round. I mean, it was it was a bunch of grown men staying up till damn near two in the morning, having an amazing time. I And then my father came in to visit, which is pretty amazing on itself because he's been absent since I was like a child. So it was my first time in my life ever being able to play a board game with my dad. So it was pretty cool. Uh, we played Liar's Dice. Yeah. And what I learned is, holy crap, the guy, because I, I had made my oldest son play, and he's really good with math. I'm not I'm not so strong with the math. I see where he got it from. Him and my father were going at it with the probabilities, hmm. like throwing out numbers at each other, like, what well, oh, but the odds of that. And, the, and I'm like, damn, bro, this dude, this dude knows math. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool watching my son, who knows my dad about as long as I've known him, uh, interact with him on a board game table. So uh, Liar's Dice and then Can't Stop. Oh, freaking uh, Rain yeah. got me into Can't Stop last week <laughs> to the point where I use that Glowforge to create my own boards. So I'm making like multiple Can't Stop boards. I think I'm going to start shipping them out to all my friends because this <laughs> game is just 1980s, Sistaxin, Push Your Luck, Dice Game, all about knowing the probabilities. It, and what I, I think what I really love about it is it reminds me of the feelings of Blood Bowl. Like I haven't said that out loud yet, but that's where it comes from. So in Blood Bowl, you have... 11 players on the pitch. And each time you take an action with a player, if that player fails and falls down, it ends your turn. So you may only activate one player that round. And so you have to decide, am I going to take the risk and actually roll some dice to do something with this player, knowing it could end everything? So you kind of have to understand risk mitigation. Can't stop. Same thing. I rolled some dice. I put some pieces on the board. Now I have to decide, knowing the probabilities of what's on the board, what are the odds that I can succeed at this next action, or do I just stop now and end my turn before something bad happens? <laughs> Very much Blood Bowl feels yeah. in, in 15 minutes or so. So can't stop, Sid Saxon Games, uh, totally recommend it. Yeah. Awesome. And then I'm done. Are you done now? Are I'm you done, done now? now? All right. And unless Mitch has got a game he wants to highlight. No, no, I'm good. Let, We're not yeah, going yeah, back keep moving. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting late. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be right back with our main topic. Stick around. Hey, this is Jamie Stegmaier from Stillmeyer Games, and you are watching the Beans and Dice Podcast. All right, welcome back, folks. Um, today we're going to talk about BGA and the uh, the black hole that I've fallen into in this last week. But uh, but actually, I, Mitchell was the first one that brought us into it. We played Chocolate Factory. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. And so I created an account and played Chocolate Factory on it. And then, you know, I will shout out um, uh, the uh, uh, Tabletop Game Talk podcast because they have a, a Discord channel. And in their most recent podcast, they also talked about falling into a, a BGA hole. Or Game Arena, yep. Yep. 
So yeah, Board Game Arena. And um, they, they have a, a channel on their Discord for like games. And I went in there and it was like 30 games posted. And I'm like, oh, I'll join, I'll join, I'll join, I'll join. And next thing I realize, I'm in like 20, <laughs> 20 12 games, 12 <laughs> games, 15 asynchronous <laughs> games. And, and after day one, I played three or four games of different things and spent, how much is it premium? Because I want to create my own games. <laughs> right, I don't want to have the only way for other people because that's a, you know that you can play for free and you can play a lot of games for free, uh, but then there are certain games that are premium only. Or in order to pl- uh, schedule a game or create games, you have to be a premium member. So I quickly looked into that. And it was thirty bucks for the year. Okay, that's a no brainer. Thirty bucks and there's like hundreds of games on here. So I paid the thirty bucks and then I realized oh you, you can create a group, be in a dice group. Okay, <laughs> and I can schedule games and invite friends. Okay, let's do that. And then, and then that's Wayne just... sends me a message. Hey, <clears throat> is it okay if I create a group for Beans and Dice? And I'm like, Hell yeah, yeah, <laughs> do it. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah. Well, you, you do your magic. Do yeah. a thing. Yep. So it, and we did that, and I've been playing. You know, two weeks now, I guess, and just playing tons of games. Uh, you know, light games during during the work day. You know, at lunchtime, crank out a couple, and then um, you know some of the the more advanced games and longer games and the, the ability to play real time with people or async asynchronous um, has been great because you know you can take your time with some games and play some big game groups we got you know our uh, welcome to and railroad ink games we got like, 10 players in each game which is great but do you guys feel that push? I mean, I uh, we, when we originally set it up, we were like, oh, okay, I'm going to set it to just two turns a day. That's all that's going to be required. I find I'm checking this thing every 15 minutes because like, oh, crap, it's my turn again. I can't be the one holding up this <laughs> yeah. game. I can't yeah. be the one that's only doing two turns a day. So we're doing like 15 turns a day, wrapping up games in, it, in a couple of hours. It, uh, it absolutely goes faster than, uh, like, I set most <laughs> of the games we've created to two turns a day, knowing that we're going to, we're all going to have three or four turns a day. It's always going to go quicker, but I don't want to yeah. push it because some of the people, you know, especially in the Welcome to games, you know, there's 10 or 12 players. Some people have to work. They can't have access to the internet at work or things like that. So two a day is all right. But, yeah. but yeah, it tends to add quick. That's why I keep, every time I see an invite for a game, I'll take it. I'll take it. Take it. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm set up in six games now. And on the, on the flip side, I feel that pressure to, to go. But then on the other side, I'm like, when after I'm done with my turn, I, I look down my six games, I'm like, Damn it, Mitchell is holding us up in four of these six games. He better <laughs> no, get logged on. Never, it can't be me. Not he better get me. logged on in the next fifteen minutes to get his turns played. So <laughs> I, I messaged Carlos one day. I'm like, "Hey, it's your turn." <laughs> I did say in in real life gaming, you have to tap me on the shoulder oh, and let yeah. me know it's my turn. Well, we'll tap you. So I get this message. I can't remember what time it was. I get a message like an early morning from Wayne. Um, you you said to tap you to let you know it's your turn. By the way, it's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, let's go. So, Funny. Well, today today during the call in show, I was like, hey, it's y'all turn, and Carlos pulled it up live during the show. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah following everything. So I think the you know the the interesting conversation, and I, I talked about this already a little bit, was you know that you have asynchronous play, and Carlos, you said you you're not sure you want to play like long involved games like feast of Odin, agricola or even know, new to me games new to you games, yeah right? new to you yeah. how tougher yeah as even far that. As think, yeah Where, whereas i'm a little bit opposite is i'm i am playing so i'm playing can't stop can't can't get much simpler than that it's a pretty simple game but i'm also playing castles of burgundy and uh el grande and now i play castles of burgundy before but it's been i don't know 10 years since i played it last probably oh, yeah. um so i i took the void of well all of these games that are on vga I want to learn how to play them. So by asynchronous, I could take the time to read the rules. And in between turns, I'm thinking like while I'm waiting for other people to go, I'm thinking about, okay, well, what's the best strategy here? I'm looking at all the tiles. I'm looking. So I've, I've kind of had, I'm in two, two groups here for the fast play games. I'm like, yeah, let's crank out a bunch of games. Let's do them real quick. But for some of these other games, I'm like, well, it's an opportunity to play a game I've never played before and take my time to learn how to play it. Whereas sometimes when I'm playing, if I was playing, um, Lost Runes of Aranac is a game you've all played. I haven't played. If we were playing that tonight on a table, I'm going to feel pressure to go quick. I don't want AP. I don't want to have to sit there and think for 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes on Damn my right, turn. You better go quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mitchell time. <laughs> better not. <laughs> you know, but, but when we're playing asynchronous on BGA, I know I have a couple of hours to really look at, you know, a turn or, you know, think about what I want to do, learn the game a little bit better. So I, I, I kind of like that, but I can also very easily see where some of these games are just too complex to play asynchronous, but real time on NBJ would probably be better. But um, unless you're playing with Carlos, and then he's going to make fun of your how long it actually took you, whenever it accounts for like oh, yeah, he pulled when that you're sleep up. and stuff. And <laughs> I'm also in a different time zone. By the way, Carlos, it's your turn on uh, can't stop. <laughs> All right, yeah, holding us up. 
Thank oh, you. look, it says one table is waiting, waiting, waiting for, for you. you. Yeah, you got to feel that <laughs> waiting for you table pressure. Yeah. And that's the difference, Wayne. You you say you feel like you have time, but when I see that red notification on there, <laughs> like that, it looks like a turn? bubble for like a notification for like a text. Right. I feel pressure to like hurry up and get it's this psychological, done. I think. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's ingrained in me. Like, okay, I have an alert bubble on my phone. I got to do something with it. I just don't want to be the the one that everybody's waiting for. Because like I say, now I looked on that list and I say six games, four games. We're waiting for <laughs> Mitchell. Damn it, Mitchell. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you like, doing? I'm working. You in class? What are you doing? What are you, are you teaching or something? <laughs> yeah. I dare you do your job. Yeah. yeah. Well, in my mind, I'm not neurotypical. I'm not normal. My brain is different. I, really? I, it, it, oh, y'all, y'all know. Good to guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I struggle to learn games on this digital format. I hate learning yeah, on tough. Zoom. I hate learning on That's for me too. Uh, uh, online programs. Like, I want paper pencil i want questions and conversation and i learn games best even in robert you'll attest there are many new games that i play that i learn and win that first game sure yeah. you know i'm watching the the experienced players play what they're going for it teaches me a little bit about strategy you know i watch you take your turns i don't have that with the the app version no you're right there that's where you you miss out on because i even do that like i don't even like you, we've been playing Seven Wonders Architects, yeah. and I'm getting killed. You three, you guys are killing me in this game every time. I'm like, why am I not doing well? And you point out, Rob, he's like, well, I'm paying attention. I'm looking at what your tableau is doing and what you need versus what I need. And I'm, if I know you need it, I take it anyway. And I realized I'm not doing that. I'm, yeah. I'm only focused on my board. And most of the games on BJ, you you focus on your board a lot, and you lose some of that yeah. experience from looking at other players. But where I am is like I'm playing like El Grande started playing. And after that first turn, I'm like, that didn't go well. And I know, <laughs> you know, woof, these people already scored points and I'm way behind. So then, I, but I know it's going to be a couple hours cause it's a, you know, longer game before my next turn. So in that three, four hour time period, I go back and rewatch the video from Rodney or <laughs> I read the rule book or I look at my board and I, you know, not even before that notification even comes up, I can spend a couple minutes looking at the board and, you know, where I don't feel that pressure of, Okay, so people are here and I'm wasting their time. It's like, why well, everyone else has got to turn and it's going to be a couple hours before it comes back to me. So I, I can log in for five minutes and look at my board and figure out what my next move will be. So that's where I think I gain the time to think about the game and, and learn it. Uh, but yeah, the digital, unless you're playing on a giant screen, you're not always going to have the, the, the look of other people's boards, you know, you scroll down. So, but yeah. That's the piece I'm missing is, is you, you mentioned it, the ability to see the four corners of the game. Right, all aspects of the game, everything on the table in all its glory. I'm missing that. I get it. I can scroll down to see where Mitchell's civilization is in our Seven Wonders game. But because it's not in a table format, right, you know, on a table, we'd be in a circle. We could see who's next to whom. I have to kind of, the, the dots connecting just ain't working. Uh, but it doesn't take away from the fun I'm having. I think for me, the BGA is going to be a place where it, where it lives for me. It's going to be light to middleweight games that I'm learning or new to or heavier games that I already know so well that I can just, without thinking, I know what I want to do. That's going to be that space where BGA lives for me. Mitch, where's, where's BGA live for you? Yeah, Um. so... Apparently, me and my friends do these challenges because I was just talking about how we're going through all my friends' games. But uh, me and Doug, I don't think you guys met Doug, but for we kind of fell off a little bit. But what we were trying to do is play every game on BGA. And for a while, we were plotting through them. We would play one <laughs> and play the next one, play the next one. And there's a lot of games on there. Asmodee acquired this thing, and, and they I think they committed to put like a new game up every week. I mean, most weeks, it's like, oh, checkers, you know. Oh, but every yeah. now and then, you get a solid one. So for me, the big thing for BGA was learning new games um, and playing the ones I already know. The ones I already know, like you say, I can, I'm pretty much on autopilot. I'll pull them up, take a five-second assessment of the board state, play it, and move on. Um, it's not something that I'm like, kind of like what Wayne's talking about, having to think about it with newer ones because the newer ones, the newer games, most of them, other people in my group haven't played, so it's like we're all learning them. It's just like, it's a lightweight game. No, sorry, a lightweight um, 
situation. You know, not, it's not like we're all trying to win. We're just trying to learn it. And then there have been some games that, based on BGA, I went out and actually bought the game. Uh, so for me, it's like it's saving me money a little bit. I'm not going to be buying random games I don't end up liking. Well, the chocolate factory. Like we, you, you introduced yeah. us to that on, on BGA, and I'm like, man, I like this game. I'm buying it. It and didn't now, save me no money. I bought that. <laughs> I bought the game. Did you exactly. buy the game too? I way? bought it too. Yeah. yeah wow, that's yeah. two copies here in Tampa, not even five miles from each other. But yeah, but and, and I'm looking through that, and and you know, you always make fun of me, Carlos, because I'm the old school gamer because I haven't played some of the new hotness. But there are some new hotness on there that I've not played. Lost Ruins Varnak. You know, hey, I got Nidavellir is not new hot, but it's in the last couple of years. And then there's also old games like El, El Grande. I had I had never got to play that. Now I have. So now I want, maybe I want to get that big box, you know, whatever. So I like BGA for trying out new games also because it lets you, you know, um, you know, refresh rules. And, and the the other one, um, Clans of Caledonia. I own that from the Kickstarter. Played it a couple of times when I first got it. It's a great game. It's like really criminally under it's criminally underrated. It's like on the top fifty on on BGA's top hundred list. But it's a game that it really only has one printing. It's not a, a huge game. It's a great worker placement, economic building game, but I haven't played it in three years now, so I, I didn't remember how to play. Well, I went on BGA, and you can set up like a one-player game and play it solo, and I played like three games of it in like an hour. Nice. And now I know I, now I remember the rules, so I could probably teach it pretty easily. You know, it's a, you know, so it's like that's a cool thing to like you know watch the Rodney video, play it on BGA, and now I can go back and teach everyone the game. The next game day, I'll bring Can- Clans of Caledonia, and we'll get that to the table type of thing. Yeah. That's the feature I'm missing that I want to know more about. Like, I want, you know, like, I went and bought, I knew Viticulture was on BGA, but I bought it on Steam so that I could play the game without having to have other people in there to kind of yeah. learn it on my own. How do you do a solo game in BGA? So so it, some games have solo mode, some don't, right? Okay. So when you go in to create a game, you can either change the number of players down to one and it'll default to the solo version, or you can change it from right, normal mode to training mode. And when you change it to training mode, it often lets you go to one player and play it solo uh, or mess around. So look for a training mode. Yeah. Because that's what I really want out of this online space is the ability to play with the game, kind of fiddle around with the pieces and the mechanisms, learn the game on my own, so that I can then jump in and be, you know, able to actually do something normal. Yeah. And then I showed you the other thing today, like with the async game, sometimes you're not paying attention to what everyone else did, but when the game is over, you can go back into that game and rewatch the game but you can choose a different person and watch it from their perspective. So you see their tableau and what they're doing on their game board. So there's a couple of things you can do there, but yeah. So I, you know, some games have solo mode, some have that training mode. And I like how you can go in and change expansion, no expansion or this variant versus like we played downforce and right. uh, Mr. Jeeves, you know, basically said, oh, you know, I know this game for me, it seems like the runaway leader. Everyone's always going to bet on the guy crossing the finish line. And Rob, you said that, well, there's a variant where you get more money if you bid on for cars further back. Well, the game we're playing right now, Downforce, that variant was available, so I, I checked it on, and now we're, now we're playing the variant of the game to see yeah. and how it changes things. So that, that ability to just, boop, change it around, variants, expansions. It's nice uh, that they're including some of that stuff yeah. in there that's not, even some of the stuff's not official. I don't even know if that's an official variant of the game, you know, uh, promoted by the man, the designers or anything, but... Uh, I know that was a popular one on on uh, BGG. People said that it was a, some one of the users just created that idea and was like came up with all the rules for it. And so uh, now that they've got it in BGA, that's pretty cool uh, that they're that progressive that they're adding stuff. And I was going to mention that it's it's nice that they're adding new games all the time. It's not always the new hotness because like Blood Rage just came out, a game that I know at least Carlos and I are huge fans of. And uh, I, I don't know why we haven't set up a game of that yet, but we got to get into that pretty soon. But uh, that's uh, there every week. It seems like I'm getting an update that they've added a couple of games to uh, their to their library to their repertoire. And so, uh, yeah, we got to keep an eye on that. And I think as some of that those new games come out, we need to try to jump on those. At least the ones that we've played. Again, we've talked a little bit about the difficulty of learning a new game through BGA. That that can be difficult for some of us. I agree too. Um, like I say I, I'm involved in six or seven different games, and I think there's only one game I haven't actually played before live in person and uh trying to learn a game on there for the first time i agree with carlos is 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 really difficult uh not being able to physically see people do stuff ask people you know that first play usually if you've got a good teacher and you've got good you know you know the people who have played you you can just ask hey why why did you do that that doesn't make sense to me 
And then, you know, usually somebody's going to be saying, oh, yeah, well, I did that because, you know, you, you may not remember, but you're going to get points over here for that and you're going to get points over there for that. Yeah. And so, you know, picking up those pointers on a first playthrough is huge and you lose some of that. I mean, there's a little chat room function in BGA. I guess you could go in there and do that. But that's a little awkward. So, yeah. you know, if you're live in person across the table from somebody, you're, you're going to ask that question a lot easier than you are, as, you know, instead of going into the chat and trying to type that. Yeah, those, but, those side yeah. conversations. Could, but but yeah. one, of the, one of the games of Railroad Inc. I'm in from, from one of the other groups, there is someone like, like you, Rob, that he's played a lot of Railroad Inc. Yeah. And he's pointing out things like, hey, make sure you're using the special oh, disc. Make nice. sure you're using that, you know, when you're doing that. But the other option too, when you when you create a game, Robert uh, Carlos, sorry, there's if a game, there are games that allow you to play against a computer. Like you can set up Can't Stop with AI and just k- play against computer instead of players. I didn't know that because I'm over here looking for an Android version of Can't Stop. Yeah. Uh, so right okay. there, you can click play against computer. Okay, because so, I was that about may to not go be in every game Android so, app yeah, yeah. for Can't Stop because I I can't stop playing it. I'm yeah. really <laughs> this game. But I think that's probably the it. difference between Steam and, and BGA is in 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 Steam almost everything you can play against a computer or an AI or solo mode. I think BGA is based on the game and who developed the game because each of these games are being developed by different people. Yeah. Um. You know, there's other. You know, I know that one of the uh, you know that board game tabletop talkback podcast. One of the, the guys from that is working on the alpha version. of Hadrian's Wall. So Hadrian's Wall is going to be coming to BGA in the next couple of months. Oh, that probably. would be great because I've owned that game. Yeah. I just never got it yeah, to the I table. Played it. I, I remember about 80% of the rules, but uh, it, that, there's a lot going on in that game. But yeah, that'd be cool to be able to play that on, on there. So yeah, do they, and they announce ahead of time what games are coming out? or I haven't BGA? seen that yet. Okay. I don't know. I yeah. follow news and it was like Great Western Trail, Blood Rage. You know, they, so they, they're coming out with some games here and there. Yeah. We well, keep... you can go and look at the alpha and beta games, and then, I mean that'll tell you what's coming soon, and you can sign okay. up yeah. for those. Oh, I'm, cool. I'm in a couple of alpha. I'm in a, a beta version of Sushi Go Party, which they have Sushi Go already. Sushi Go Party is a little bit of a more complex version of Sushi Go, but it's not really complex. Um, so there, yeah, there's alpha and beta games that you can get in there and go and play. They're a little buggier. Like um, I played an alpha game of Bonanza. Does not work well oh, online. Really? I own that game. I've actually never played it, but I, <laughs> I own it. <laughs> That's not the kind of yeah, game I, that you want to play online. <laughs> I've stopped beta testing stuff on BGA because it's just infuriating. Because you get invested <laughs> in a game and it's like, well, it just skipped my turn or something like that. It's frustrating, man. Wow. But I wait till it's it's done, done, done. Yeah, I beta tested uh, Terraforming Mars. And uh, yeah, there was places where it locked up like two thirds of the way through the game. It's like, Oh, I'm this far into the game and it's locked yeah. up and I can't even make a move. It's is yeah, that was, that was just a point they had to, we had to crash it and restart it. So yeah, that, but that, that even happens on steam. Cause I was in the beta for, um, brass in, yeah. on steam and it, it, it was oh, so buggy. I've never done a beta test. I'm not a computer guy. I don't do video games. I'm, doing, I'm, I'm yeah. like tabletop, but I got an opportunity to do blood bowl three on beta. That's the newest edition is coming out for blood bowl on steam. And I did it. I jumped in. And I got a code and everything. And then I played my first game. And then it locked up. Oh yeah. And that was it. It's frustrating. <laughs> I was yep. done. That's frustrating. <laughs> Never played again. Yeah. They're asking me for feedback. I'm like, no, I'm done. Your like, game sucks. <laughs> it froze on me in the beta. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's supposed to do that, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what you're there for. <laughs> is you're there to to work out those bugs. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go play. Can't stop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I see it on your on your t- on your phone there. Yep. I'm trying to figure out how to start a solo game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, I, I think, uh, you know, for the 30 bucks a year, yeah. I've already gotten more than $30 worth of entertainment out of this in the first week, in the last two weeks. I'm a cheapskate to start with <laughs> anyway, but uh, with, uh, I, I think what nine out of the 10 people I'm playing games with right now are all premium <laughs> members. And so I am not yet, but I'm in six games because I guess as long as people keep inviting me, I can jump in yeah, with so many how, as I want. How that worked so. is you have like, when I first started playing it, I was in three games and I tried to join a fourth and said, you can't. Uh, I'm like, oh, I guess you got to be a premium member for that. And someone made a comment that no, it's as you play games, you get a rating. Oh, and okay. like if you don't, if you don't drop out of games or leave games or mess up games, then you get a higher rating. The higher rating opens up more ability. Ah, so like you, okay. as you get experience in the game, get into more games, you get into more stuff. games. Oh, yeah. okay. So there, right, may be, cool. there may still be a, be a cap for you because you're not a premium member. Okay, but six is clearly not it. But yeah, it was so, cool. If I hit my cap, then I'll have to make that decision. But right now, I'm just keep joining games that people invite me to. I'm yep. like, cool. Yep, I'm in. Yep. So I had I've had five or six games end today, and I'm still in fourteen. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I haven't played with anyone I don't know, quote unquote. No, no, I haven't either. Right, I've played games with people in the board, the Beans and Dice community, 
and that's it. Like that's the only games I've played. Mitchell, have you explored playing like against just rando people? Yeah, um, it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes you get the people who just stop playing midway through whenever they realize they're losing. That's kind of frustrating. Uh, one cool thing, though, I haven't experienced it yet, but uh, Connor, he gets in a lot of tournaments on BGA. He has a lot of fun with that. Some of them have special rules. Um, like I think there was a tapestry tournament where it was like 1v1s, and then you know everybody plays everybody one time, and then it's like Around top Robin. X number, move on kind of thing. Uh, so that's interesting. That's unique and different. And he enjoyed that. But I think I think if I remember correctly, it was 12 games and you had to play them all simultaneously. It was turn-based. Oh, wow. And it was a very strict turn timer. And I think like one of them, he didn't even finish in time because he was, like, he was trying to jostle 12 games of tapestry at one time. Now, is that a so, premium thing, do you know? I mean, or uh, do you have to be premium to, to enter tournaments? I'm not sure, Wayne. I don't, do you I, don't, know? I don't think you do. I think there's actually, if you go to the, the head, main page of Borgia Marina, uh, towards the bottom, there's a there's a tournament area. Huh. Um, and it's like you have to have experience. There's an experience cap to get in the tournament. So okay. it, there's, on the, on the right-hand side, there's my agenda and there's tournaments. And I, 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 I can't stop tournament. It's at the top of my oh, list. Oh, yeah. I'm like, should <laughs> I do it? But I think it's basically, so you, I don't think you have to be a premium to do it, but I think you have to earn enough experience to get into the games. So that shows that you're a consistent player, someone that knows the game, um, which is good. I, I've played a number of games, especially Can't Stop, Nittle Valier, um, Chocolate Factory, a couple others with just randos. Like I see the game is filling up. They need, I jump in and I've, I haven't had the people dropping out. I think, you know, I, I've had someone freeze and, you know, they, their computer froze and they left. But they were like winning, so I don't. I don't think that they would drop it out because of that reason. <laughs> but um, it's been it's been fun. I, you know what I realized is is uh, I was telling uh, Carlos earlier. We, I played a game at Chocolate Factory, and I thought I was doing pretty good. Although I did screw up one of my placements, but I was like I was like in hundred, like in the nineties. And then I look over, and the 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 two people I was playing were like in the one sixties, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> they know how to play that game real well. You know, so you will. And it, what's good though is it does rate. You can go into the game. And it says, you know, novice, they've never played, apprentice, good player, expert player, really good player. So you can kind of know going in, okay, this person's played Chocolate Factory a lot and they're good at it. So it's going to be tough, which I like because you know, I want the challenge. Make me better at the game, you know? Yeah, that's where Mitchell got me into this trap for Scythe where he set me up with this tournament and holy crap, I got my butt handed to me. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, I felt like... So pathetic. Like I, I thought I was good at Scythe. Oh my god. The part yeah, of that story no. I love is that you uninstalled the app after <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Get out! Eject! Eject! Did you really? <laughs> I li- like that last because I committed to it. Right? It was round. Ro- it was a, a Swiss ter- Swiss round Swiss pairings. So I had to finish all my rounds, and once that last round finished, I uninstalled Scythe Digital from my computer. I was just done. <laughs> he was I, broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing the topic here, but I just thought about it. Um, the other day, someone invited us. I, I don't remember which y'all it was. It was a game of Can't Stop Express, and then it didn't. I guess it got, must have gotten canceled. But I looked it up. It's a roll and write version of Can't Stop. We should we should oh. try to play that. Yeah, it, oh, I, cool. I played once. I played it solo once, and it's definitely a little more complex than Can't Stop, though. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think that was Carlos. He played. He, created that game, but then canceled it because you created the wrong one. It, yeah. it, I didn't realize that there were this, that many different versions of Can't Stop since the 80s, and one of them is the Express version. <laughs> the Express version. It's Rolling Ride version. So, yeah. You know what? I just laser cut my own board and started playing in person. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> what, what other games have you played on it, Mitchell, that, that you found have been... Yeah, what's the most complex game that each of us has thrown out there in, in BGA? I'm going to have to go and log in and look at what games I've played. I'm going to say for Let's me, it's Nid- Nidavalier. Probably, is yeah. the most complex game I've played to date. Uh, you know what? No, Chocolate Factory. Chocolate Factory would probably be the most complex game I've played. <laughs> but I think they're both similar weight Yeah. Uh, for complexity. I'd have to say uh, Nidavalier is the only one that I've done on the phone because we played Chocolate Factory uh, together after the show. I think we all played together. So it was on a computer. We got the chat through it. But Nidavalli is the only one that I've done async where I've actually played on my cell phone. Yeah. I have to say that the system does a good job of of changing the UI, the user that, interface, the aspect ratio. to fit your phone. Like, I haven't had a problem with playing games on my phone. Yeah, things are just a little small. But, yeah, otherwise, I mean, I'm, I'm 
find I'm constantly zooming in, zooming out. That's that your old thing. eyes. Well, I guess, but yeah. Some of that stuff's pretty tiny on the phone, but yeah. <laughs> Depending on the game you're playing, I guess. But I Can't Stop's not bad, because there's not a whole lot going on in that one. But yeah, I find uh, like a um, downforce. I'm having to zoom in a little bit to read the cards and zoom back out, but yeah, it's not too bad. Nidavellir is still the, the most complex one you've played? Yeah, Robert? I think Nidavellir. Yeah, I think that would be mine. I, I played that Chocolate Factory the one time with you guys on there. But uh, yeah, I mean, like you say, that was kind of a similar weight, I think, between the two. But I'd say Nidavellir. Nidavellir, I find I'm having to pull up the rule book occasionally, again, to kind of remind myself what the different, uh, I don't know what they call them, the leaders or whatever, uh, the special cards that you can draft are to see what each of their abilities are. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a fair amount going on in that game. Again, I haven't played that one as much. I've only played that, that I think, twice in person. This is my third play that we're working on that we just finished up, actually, um, tonight. But uh, I'd say that's probably the most com- complex one I've played. But I do, I, I definitely want to get on Blood Rage. I'm going to keep pushing Blood Rage. We need to get a game of that going. Yeah, I'm done. I would say, you know, Viticulture, um, Castles of Burgundy, El Grande, and... Um, uh, I think probably probably Castles of Burgundy then of those three, I would think is probably the hardest, the most complex. There's a lot going on in that game. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to think of the other game. I can't think of it right now. But yeah, Castles of Burgundy is and it's working well. It's turn based and it's you know, we've been playing for it's been about three days, four days that we've Castles, been playing. It. Castles has a player board, right? Yeah. It, it has your own tablet. And there's also the center the, the board. The center board and you're buying from the center board. So there's a lot of places you have to go to. Like I could just see that being frustrating. Like having a not really that bad because I'm not paying attention to the other player boards. So I'm just focusing on the main board and my board and it's been pretty good. Now I'll say I like again it's a game I haven't played you know I played it a ton ten years ago. I've only played it a few times over the last ten years, so I, I, I mostly wanted to play it just to learn it again. Yeah. Uh so the first couple of turns I was horrible. I was buying stuff that shouldn't be. I wasn't paying attention to the tiles right. So I, I'm I'm playing with three other people and they're k- killing me. You know, they're in the one fifties. I'm in like a hundred. Um, but I think next game I'll be much better because I remembered how to play now. So yeah. that's, that's how I've used it. Yeah. All right, Mitch. We gave you some time to pull up your records there to talk about complexity. And it's your yeah, turn. Uh, so I, I I've played a hundred and two <laughs> games on BGA. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I've played thirty two different games. One I've played wow. the most is Arnak. In terms of complexity, um, I mean, you guys said End of Valir, Viticulture. I've got Arnak, um, <coughs> Tapestry. Nothing super, super heavy. Uh, a lot of it's been more lightweight games. Welcome to um, Cloud City, Patchwork, Skull, Potion Explosion. So uh, medium to light side, I would say. No Feast for Odin? No, I, I was very interested in it, but... I was very, I, I tried. I was very intimidated by yeah. playing it digitally, like you guys were saying, for the first time without that, a teacher. It's got a lot going on. That's one I would definitely recommend. You'd, you'd want somebody kind of walking you through it. I guess we'll all jump in, you know, once we have Hadrian's Wall on there. Oh, yeah. None of us, you know, haven't played before. We'll just jump right in. Jump right in. Yeah, I played it one time, and like I said, I remember about 80% of the rules, but that's, there's a lot going on in that one. That's a How does the Gladiator Arena work? Yeah, that's the one part I, I completely... <laughs> actually, Michael, uh, who, uh, Lorenzo, who taught us that, uh, he's like, I'm not even going to explain that part because I don't really understand how that part works, so we'll just not play that that portion of the board, So, uh, which is only one sixteenth of the of the two pages that you have, so it's... It's it's not like you were probably leaving a whole lot out, but yeah, you got to train gladiators, and then you got to fight the gladiators, and then you got to figure out if they win or die, or yeah. And was, if Uwe has anything to say about it, you got to feed them. Oh, you got to feed your gladiators, <laughs> you gotta, of course. Yeah, you got to feed your gladiators. But yeah. I think that's you know we this this past week we spent a lot of time playing async games. I think that's you know our Discord probably in the next week or so I'll start saying like, all right, hey, I'm not doing anything on a Tuesday night. I'm just sitting here in the game. house. Does anyone want to do a live game? Poor or something? Mitchell, I see him on there regularly. Yeah, and no it, one ever hits me yeah. on that. No. Oh, I'll do it. It's your, you're all over there in, in Louisiana town. So. I'm a whole hour behind you guys. Yeah, I know. So inconvenient. inconvenient. Nah, I'll get over it. Now, for all you folks in the Beans and Dice community on the Discord, we have a channel called Streaming and Online Games. Yeah. Stream and Online Games. Something like that. Uh, yeah. That's a place where you can go in and let people know what games you're looking to play on the BGA or even Steam. Yeah. Right? We've got an active oh, group in oh, there, so... Oh, did he just win it? Or, I yeah? Just, yeah, I can't stop, just won. Uh, he just won. Oh, oh that sucks. Son of a... Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, 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 oh. bust, bust, no, bust. Did you bust it? No, I didn't. I thought uh, I had 
Oh, no. Is it only your second one? Second one. I thought oh, it was my not third. your third one. That was oh, my third. Oh, okay. Still going. Still yeah. going. Actively live playing our game. Yeah. On that note. <laughs> edit, edit that out because I didn't win. <laughs> no, we're leaving that in. We're leaving that in. So for you folks in the BZ Dice community, check us out on the Discord. Oh, uh, Carlos. I'm sorry. Carlos is going to win right now. Yeah, probably. All I need is an eight, baby. And if you I, just got two. Oh, did I? I have, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in the uh, Seven Wonders He's Architects, seven wonders architects. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm gonna get me This a is ki- so meta Just gave you the win <laughs> I'm, kind of I'm meta, getting yeah. me a kitty cat Playing games Talking about games On a game channel yeah. <laughs> But no man, But you're right though is, is join the Discord If you're in the Discord You post your username In that thing You'll be invited to the group In in uh, in BGA Yeah And, and be- as, as we create games I just Whoever's online I keep throwing it in Yeah there. in the Meetings and Dice group There's always people Willing to play too It's like every time We post something It's like everybody's <laughs> uh, Somebody else is wanting in So yep Victory! If, Wayne posts it, if Mitchell posts it, though, you know. Nobody responds. I've got to post something <laughs> hey, up there. Come on. We're already in bed. Get we're like, going. We're in the future, bro. Yeah. We're already asleep. <laughs> hey, I, we're I'm, into tomorrow. Hour in the past. I'm a night out, Mitchell. You post the game, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Maybe, so, no, one thing you do well, Wayne, I'll say this, is like, you're very specific, like, hey, I'm playing this game. Usually, I'm just like, hey, anybody up for BGA, and I oh. guess that doesn't... Yeah. Wet the appetite enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pick a game, put pick it Pick a out game there. and go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm worried because if I say yes, he's like, all right, I'm setting up. A uh, feast for Odin right now. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> it's midnight, bro. I'm laying in bed. I was just... Async, async. Yep. Anyway. All right, great topic. Uh, BGA, that's our topic for this week. Uh, don't forget Not to check us out. Not sponsoring the podcast or anything. We're no, just, no. They just, they just have most of our money except for Rob. Maybe in the future. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the good one. I stayed out. Yep. Rob, Rob doesn't support anything financially. Like, is, is in the, the other group that I'm in that plays BGA, is they, they're running tournaments themselves. They just did an Azul tournament. Oh, yeah. And the winner of the Azul tournament got a year subscription to BGA. Oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Oh, that's kind of cool. I need on that. Yeah. <laughs> Rob likes to win. He likes yeah, to win. Let's win yeah, something. Win a, win a... I, I might be able to send you a sign. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's your sign. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we are the Beans and Ice podcast, a podcast about how we, how we game. game. How I'm we Carlos. Game. Rob. Wayne. I'm Mitchell, and that was out of order, but it was. It, it was. It is what we it can is. Do it in the right order, and then you can edit, spice it together. Edit, edit, edit. Do you edit. want me to edit? Yeah. No, I'm gonna leave it all in. All right, it's all go. staying in. So we're done. And now we hear Wayne trying to make him cheat live. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so check us out Thursday nights, our live call in show. Call in, talk to us about what BGA games you're playing, or join us on the Discord where Mitchell can ask for people to play and be ignored wholly because he's <laughs> in the past. You know, we're already in bed for the next day. In the future. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Listening. Yeah, listening thing. And have a good night, y'all. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Dice. Later. Bye, everyone. Say bye, Wayne. Bye. Thanks for watching the Beans and Dice podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to the Beans and Dice Pad. Oh pad- my god. Pad-cast. <laughs> the Padcast. The Padcast. The pad-cast. Where we talk about Pad Thai all the time. Get out of here with that Padcast. <laughs> like over here, see? It's a pad- Get out that Padcast. Pad- pad- <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good thing about it being a podcast, Got you it. can edit all that out. <laughs> and you or, will. Put it at the back. Or, or, yeah, or, 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 just like you did to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or use it to promote it. Put yeah. it in there. Got it. <laughs> hey folks. <laughs>